How far would you go to charge your cell phone if you had no electricity? Would you walk for hours? Miles? That's what millions of people across Sub-Saharan Africa do every day, simply to charge their phones. I'm here in Tanzania because Sub-Saharan Africa is experiencing a major energy crisis. Modern day Africa has been transformed by cell phones, but the infrastructure needed to charge those phones and to power Sub-Saharan Africa in general just isn't there. And it's leaving hundreds of millions of people in the dark. In the village of Mukaranga, I immediately felt welcomed. Since most people don't have electricity in their homes, they go to charging stations to power their phones. Rachel Mango, a healthcare provider at the local clinic, was picking up her cell phone that she paid roughly 20 Hi, cents Rachel. to charge. Hi, I'm Laura. Nice uh, to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. She took me to her clinic's maternity ward, which has no power. So this is the clinic? Yes, yeah, this is the clinic. This is a postnatal room. We use it to rest mother after delivery. Do you often have to deliver babies in the dark because there's no light? Yes, men, men. Vital immunizations for mothers and children are kept cool by gas from a propane tank. If there is no power, there is no immunization. It's getting dark out and Rachel is about to see a client who is in her third trimester of pregnancy and she could give birth at any moment. So Rachel basically has to do whatever she can just to make it work. Tunatumia sim za tochi kwenye sim zetu. Tunatumia wakati mwingine kama mafuta taya tunatumia taa za mafuta. Mtoto amevaa vizuri. According to the World Health Organization, women in developing countries such as Tanzania are dying every 90 seconds from complications during pregnancy or childbirth. Would having adequate light save lives? Yes, will save many mothers' life. While a few homes in this town are connected to an electrical grid, they often experience frequent blackouts, sometimes lasting up to 48 hours. 18-year-old Hussein Mwende has lived his entire life without ever having electricity in his home. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, I'm studying always, all the times, because I want to be a doctor. So I to help uh, my families and the communities and to make it a little better for my life. I have to use the kerosene lamps, which affects my eyes. My eyes feel painful, and they sometimes produce tires, which is bring out from my eyes. Sometimes I have to walk far distance to find the place where the electricity is available. It sounds extremely difficult. Do you ever feel like giving up? I can't give up. I will work hard as I can so as to reach my goals. I will not let the darkness hold me back. Mukuranga is typical of many villages across Tanzania. Just a few hours away is Tanzania's largest city, Dar es Salaam. It might seem surprising, but Africa has the world's fastest growing middle class. <laughs> While there still is a long way to go, signs of development are all around. At Nelwa's gelato shop, I met owner Mercy Kitamari. How many gelato shops are there in Dar es Salaam? So there's like five. In all of Dar es Salaam? In Tanzania. In all of Tanzania? Yeah. Why do you think that there are so few? The cost. An average person won't even think of doing this business because when they think of power cards, they just, you don't even think further than that. There's a blackout right now. You have a generator, that's yeah. why we hear this little buzz mm -hmm. in the yeah, air. Yeah, yeah. It and seems it's often, extremely challenging to have this kind of business in a, in a country with so many blackouts. It, it does slow you down. 
When power cuts off, the first thing is the freezers. You freak out. I start thinking, oh shit, we need to hire a generator. You hire a car to bring it, you hire a crane to lift it, and for the generator, they charge you per hour. So it's very expensive, Yeah. and super, meanwhile, super. your yeah. gelato is melting. Yeah. Is it worth it to you? It is. It has, uh, it has been worth it. It's been super challenging, super, super challenging, but every day, there's progress. Mercy relies on social media to build her business. In many ways, her entrepreneurial spirit represents Africa's enormous potential, but energy issues may determine how bright that future will be. I love my country, don't get me wrong, but there's still a lot of work to be done. It's Saturday night here in Mukaranga, Tanzania, and we're gonna do what the locals do. We're gonna go to the movies at the local movie theater. They're playing a local Tanzanian movie. It's called Genge. Is it good? Do you like it? Very good. good. Most people in this town don't have electricity, so they come here for entertainment. Luckily, this place has a generator. When blackouts occur, life proceeds for those that can afford a generator. But for those that can't, it's a different story. There's a blackout going on right now in this neighborhood. Everything around me is pitch black. The stores have closed. The only light is really this candle and whatever motorcycles and cars pass down the road. It seems strange and a little unsettling to be in near total darkness that was beyond my control. But those around me didn't seem phased. This is life is normal here and in pretty much the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. Thinking back on the people I'd met, they were making it work despite the challenges. And if power never arrives, I'm sure they'll keep plugging away, determined to make a better life for themselves and for others. But charging stations and generators will only go so far. These are some of the friendliest and supportive people I've ever met. They deserve better, and I wish them well. Watch this next episode to meet Hussein's mom and see why she reacts this way to the idea of electricity. How do you think your life would be different if you had access to reliable energy? To learn more about energy poverty, visit one.org slash energy. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Secret Stories.